Hello and welcome to another edition of Door County Today. I'm your host, Paul Renier, with Door County Nature and Travel. The White Gull Inn, built in 1896, is one of Door County's most historic properties. This year, the inn celebrates Jan and Andy Coulson's 40th anniversary as innkeepers. They have some great stories to tell, which we'll get to in a moment. On today's show, we'll also meet with Charles Chick Peterson, the Dean of Door County Painters. Chick's watercolors captured a peninsula of past and present, often in the same painting. Later, we'll meet Pete Thielen, blues musician and man about the county, who has helped shine a light on Door County musicians through his compilation CD, Kaleidoscope. Finally, we'll meet with Sherry Grancy at Fine Line Designs in Ephraim about what makes her beautiful gallery such a revered destination for art lovers. Now let's start this month's show with a visit to the White Gull Inn in Fish Creek. In 1896, a German doctor had immigrated to Milwaukee and had set up a practice. He must have been up here on vacation and decided he wanted to move his family here, loved it. I think he probably thought that he wouldn't be able to support himself solely as a, as a physician, so he decided to go into the resort business. And they built this building that we're in right now, the White Gull Inn, and he named it after his wife, Henrietta. And over the years, of course, Fish Creek was growing as a summer resort. It was a place people came out of the cities. Door County was the air-conditioned peninsula. In the 1940s, it was owned by a James Langemack, and he ran it as the Sunset Beach Lodge. And then he sold it to Frank Ranney, who ran it as the Lakewood Lodge and Shore Cottages in the 1950s. And it wasn't until 1959 when a young artist from Madison, Andy Redman, and his wife Elsie came to Fish Creek and uh, purchased the Lakewood Lodge. And they had this vision of turning it into kind of a New England style inn. And they named it the White Gull Inn. And he started the fish boils. They brought in more antiques. They put up the wallpaper. They really gave it the feel. In May of 72, I went to the post office and there was a telegram from one of my friends. And uh, a group of guys were getting together and trying to buy the White Gull and they wanted uh, another partner. And uh, I said, yep. I arrived here in, 19, in June of 1972 and peered through the windows of the White Gull and thought, I need to work here. This is so totally cool. Andy, he hired me as a housekeeper and he and I quickly became friends. Well, the first years w were amazing. I had worked as a bartender and done other sort of resort work, never anything like management. I just uh, learned on the job. Some of the things we made mistakes and we quickly had to learn. Uh, we were very fortunate that the White Gull, the only food that was being served here was the fish boil. And that was what really was established when we came, even though the rest of the property needed a lot of work and a lot of uh, rehab. The fish boil was famous and continues to be today. And we had a wonderful gentleman who was our fish boiler. Russ Ostrand was his name. He knew how to do the fish boil. He was the draw. He played the accordion while he boiled the fish. He really taught us how to do a fish boil. And we just learned from there. We evolved. The inn was becoming more and more popular. Um, we had many more guests staying here, and I think it occurred to us that maybe it would be great fun to have a more sophisticated restaurant that would serve evening meals off a menu and having um, just a more elegant setting. But I don't think we could have done it if we hadn't been lucky enough to be surrounded by a staff that not only is, is dedicated to the White Coast. We are, but they've stayed here. We have two managers that have been with us for well over 20 years. We have our day chef, Julie Zach, has been here, and uh, two of our bakers since the early 1980s. Dean, our evening chef, st has been here for uh, over 20 years. Uh, this time of year, we um, have our menu meetings to discuss how we want to change things, uh, maybe try to work some more local products into the menu items. We get our local whitefish from uh, J&M Fisheries from um, Gills Rock. 
seeds. We get our local cherries from Sequis Orchards up in Sister Bay. I get my smoked whitefish from Charlie Smokehouse up in Gills Rock. The breakfast is another wonderful story of, of the Waiko. One of my cooks came to me and said, try this, and I tried it, and it was a pineapple stuffed French toast. And it was very good. And I said, have you tried this with cherries? We all loved it. We put it on the menu, and it was a, really an instant success. In 2010, we got the surprise of our life when Good Morning America informed us that one of our guests had entered us in their contest for the America's Favorite Breakfast, and we were a finalist. Uh, they came out to see us. They interviewed Julie, our day chef. Somehow, the White Gull Inn got the, the most number of votes, and we uh, ended up being the best breakfast in America. So the thing that the White Gull Inn, I think, has done really well, and Andy and Jan have while they've kept the historic nature of the inn, they've made sure that it's up to the standards of, of travelers today. And they, they have a lot of the amenities that, that current travelers are expecting when they travel, but they've done it in a way that it preserves the historic nature here of the White Gull Inn. We have to not change what people have come to expect from us, but we also have to be aware of, of changes and trends. And so, it's a, it's a pretty stimulating and challenging uh, business. Just meeting the people here makes it fun to come to work every day. And I should say this, people who come to Door County, and in particular, I think the White Gull Inn, they're primed to have a good time. We never feel like there's any hardship in coming to work or dealing with customers. It's a delight to go to a place where people come in the door in pretty good spirits, they're on vacation. When you, when you start chatting with people, it's always a pleasant experience. I uh, have always wanted to make a living from my art, and therefore the interests of the market, the tastes of the market were important to me. And it turned out that the market of people visiting a place like Ephraim in the summertime were interested in my kind of art. So I had no difficulty developing a considerable following of uh, rural and uh, nautical paintings. I was given a uh, painting kit by some friends for a birthday gift in 1943 and I have a painting uh, which was my first one which was a cowboy with a horse so I was inclined toward adventurous stories Indians and cowboys became a common part of my subject matter this year I've done two having to do with canoeing in, in uh, very uh, demanding situations. One of them is a canoe shooting down a rapids over a little waterfall. And then of course as I reached the age of 17 and 18, I became aware of girls. <laughs> and uh, I suppose some of them crept into the subject matter of my painting. I think my uh, interest in rural subject matter probably grew naturally from my home life in Elgin, Illinois. My brother and I and a couple of other friends would commonly leave our home and walk five miles through farmers' fields and following stream beds instead of highways. I loved the idea of being close to the source of food and labor. I went to the American Academy uh, after I returned from service, and they said in their correspondence files they had letters from my mother. And I can show you the drawings that I was sending my mother from the Pacific, which she then sent to the American Academy and asked for a critique. And then she said in her letters, my son is an artist, and when he comes home from the Pacific, he will want more training. When I came home, here was all this stuff from the American Academy, and so that's what I did. She had determined my life, and I didn't know about it until last year, 60 years later. I uh, met uh, Sue, my wife, in summer school at Madison. I offered her a ride home uh, to her home in Port Washington and it turned out her parents were not at home, they were up here. 
they were on their boat tied to a dock here in Ephraim. When I got up here, I encountered the beauty of Anderson's Dock, for example, which has intrigued me ever since. So I can show you today a painting I just finished, which is centered at Anderson Dock, one of hundreds I have done over the last 40 years. But at the time, there were very few others active in art. And the county itself uh, was uh, um, simpler, I think. One of the uh, major areas of uh, public interest in my work has centered in what I call ghost painting, and uh, particularly a series of some 60 prints that were made by my publisher of my work. I had uh, been uh, occasionally doing a ghostly image, and I have in the house the first one that I'm conscious of, painted in 1974 of a wrecked schooner with the image of the spirit of the captain standing near the wreck, speculating on what he might have done to have avoided the wreck. And so uh, the idea of a spirit, a benign rather than a haunting or ghostly image, a benign spirit struck me as a desirable subject to include in paintings and it, it seems to have found a very good audience. I have undergone transition from a, a rather free, confident painting. That is, I knew what I was doing and so I could dash it on in a, in a true watercolor fashion. But over the years I've become, I think, I must have gotten some Flemish blood into my Swedish ancestry because I have become a 15th century Fleming. I love the challenge of tiny detail. And so that's what I'm doing, even on larger paintings like these memory series, Ghosts, it have a great deal of intricate detail in them. My earliest paintings in Door County probably uh, were based on the water because I was so avidly devoted to sailing. Conveying some of the um, stress and uh, life-threatening danger strongly appealed to me and I've, I've had a great time doing that. My interest is in the story, more about what the painting, the art, can tell us about life rather than merely stimulate the nerve endings about aesthetic combinations of color and shape. I want to be prized for a true statement about life in most of my paintings. Uh, my name is Pete Thielen. Uh, I was born in Chicago, Illinois, and uh, I currently live here in Bailey's Harbor. My great-great-grandfather uh, uh, moved here from, from Germany in, 19, in the early 1980s, and they settled in Bailey's Harbor in 1982. And actually, his farm was right across the lake here. I became a musician because of primarily my seventh grade music teacher. He, uh, brought uh, a copy of uh, Porgy and Bess to class one day and played, uh, played it for, the, for my class. And uh, I was done, that was it, it was the blues. So that was seventh grade. You got me peeping, you got me hot. You got me peep, hot, hot, peep, any way you want to let it roll. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. You got me doing what you want, baby, why you want to let it go? I formed the dinosaurs, I think it was in like 90, 92. And uh, played in the valley in LA, and it's where I met a very close and dear friend, another blues man from, uh, from Louisiana, uh, American blues legend Chico Chisholm. And he was the Howlin' Wolf's drummer. And um, I worked with Chico for 10 years. Basically, the, the songs that the dinosaurs do are really the, the standards. Robert Johnson, uh, Sweet Home, Chicago, um, all the old blues favorites of the 20s and 30s. 
we're, we're, we're definitely a throwback blues band. I can remember the fourth of July running through the backwoods there. I can hear my high dog barking, chasing down a who do they? Chasing down a who do they? Born out of you. When I moved back here in 2001, you know, I kept a really low profile for like two or three years. I mean, I just went out and, you know, rekindled and watched the different artists that I'd liked and listened to up here for years, you know. And then I just went to Hans Christian and, you know, in 2005, I said, you know, I'd really like to do, uh, do a, a blues album, you know, with a lot of the artists up here. You know, I've got like, you know, eight or ten in mind. There could have been 30 people on that CD, but you have to, you know, obviously draw the line somewhere. I just think it's a splendid uh, CD of the artists up here, and I couldn't be more proud of that, you know. Um, and a lot of people don't know this, but out of the hundreds and thousands of CDs that were actually um, submitted for a folk uh, Grammy, this we were in the top 150. You know, I think that speaks for a lot for it, you know. I've always been intrigued with electronic music. And um, because of this, this new CD, I, I did want it to be so different. So I tried to combine blues, psychedelic, and electric. I call it bluesadelic. It's just new horizons. I mean, I think that's what music's all about anyways, and certainly art, you know, for me. It is the new and the different, you know. You just got to press it. I put a spell on you because you're mine. You better stop the thing that you're doing, babe. You better watch out, I ain't lying. You better watch your fooling around. You better watch out, put me down. I put a spell on you because you're mine. It, there's so much family history here for me, for sure. And it's interesting because I spent a lot of my time living in other places, looking for a place that, you know, that would suit me well in here. After all that looking and all those thousands of miles, it was here all along. My name is Sherry Granzi and I'm the owner of Fine Line Designs Gallery in Ephraim, Wisconsin. The building that the gallery is housed in was a chicken coop originally. It was built in the 1950s by Donald and Audrey Hatch. And they actually use it as a chicken coop, which is kind of ironic since the family name is Hatch. It had a thousand fryers upstairs and a thousand layers downstairs and the chickens would actually make their way from the front of the chicken coop all the way to the back and that was kind of, that was their life. And in 1981, the front part of the gallery, which was restored, was turned into an artist studio by a furniture artist and a fiber artist. In 1995, my mother-in-law, Connie Hatch, became affiliated with the property, and in 1998, she designed the silo edition and over, so that the space that the gallery is at right now has been like this since 1998, but the level of art that we carry and represent has increased in quantity and quality. Connie saw that the arts in Door County was expanding and the quality and the level was expanding so she just has, she has a beautiful vision. She really has created the gallery for what it is today with her vision and her style and fortunately for me I was able to, to come in and work under her and um, in 2006 I took over the gallery and, and here we are today. Connie and I are very different. She's actually my mother-in-law, so um, it, it's, it's always been a really great experience. Um, we've been together, I've known her for 21 years. Uh, we have a long history together, and we are very different in our style, and I think that's why it works. Each artist has their own style, and really to try to find one vision 
is, is pretty difficult, I think, sometimes. I mean, you really have to open your mind and expand and keep the ideas open because um, that's what art is. It, it, it's open and it's, it's vast. And we look for uniqueness, we look for quality, we look for composition. I think that's what's unique about our galleries. We're very eclectic and we have a, a lot of different media. And I think what we're always very proud of is how we get it all to work together. One thing that I do like about the way that we represent and display is the harmony that we find in all of the different media that we showcase. You know, from a painter to a bronze to a glass piece to a piece of furniture, we can create this beautiful vignette for our customers to see and hopefully, you know, fall in love and take home with them. We feel that um, it's in everyone's best interest that we can fairly represent each artist that we take on. So we never want to take on more than what we can show. We actually represent um, six local artists. Um, Pam Murphy, uh, who's a, a, an oil painter. I think each picture reminds people of something that they have seen in their own family photographs or remember doing. I notice a lot of her little children, you remember seeing your children or you remember doing it yourself or the gesture or whatever. It's the nostalgia that really resonates with people. Um, Stephanie Evans, she's a ceramic artist. Okay, this piece has 500 cast, carved and cast, um, clovers in it, and she did put one four-leaf clover in. We look, make people look for it. <laughs> um, and then uh, there's another one that has um, inside a little dining room scene, complete with the chandelier hanging. Jan Forkert is a multimedia artist. She works in jewelry and copper and enamel. Joel Thomas is a custom furniture builder, along with Nathan Hatch, who Nathan has a very interesting story. He's actually sixth generation um, to live on this property. His grandparents built the chicken coop, and Nathan just recently graduated with his MFA in sculpture from the University of Kentucky and really inherited his parents' artistic genes. We open it up to any handmade art. You know, we have really some unique sculptures in here. Uh, our newest one we brought in from Stephen Woodward, who is a local artist, is a turned um, high-density styrofoam sculpture that has grandma's braided rug around it, and it's really about recycled pieces and history and what it meant to him as a youngster. So a lot of art, regardless of what it is, is such a personal expression. We always try to enhance the outdoors each year a little bit as we can, you know, the sculpture garden, bringing in different artists, um, doing some different landscaping. Um, we were really lucky. We um, featured Lyman Whitaker, who is a nationally represented artist. He does these beautiful copper kinetic sculptures that have really enhanced um, our gallery. I believe he's benefited all of the artists um, in the interior because so many people now are noticing his work outside for their beautiful visual they give off and they're stopping in to look at his work and then they take a walk inside the gallery. So he has been a, a wonderful addition um, to the gallery. You could talk to a lot of our clients who have been coming to this space, this studio since 1981 when two artists first opened the gallery. Um, and from what it is then to what it is now, um, it, it's quite a transformation. It's a beautiful transformation. We're very, very proud of how hard we work to develop that and be one of the top galleries in Door County. I feel lucky that I get to come to work every day at a place like this. It's really hard to be in a bad mood here. Thanks for joining us today. Remember to visit us often to find out more about Door County's history, landscapes, businesses, and people. I'm Paul Renier for Door County Today. See you next time.